A partir de agora, daremos início à nossa primeira atividade. Para isso, convidamos para a mesa redonda Technologies Transversality and Higher Education in the Cognitive Area, a, pesqui a pesquisadora do Núcleo de Telesaúde da Faculdade de Odontologia da Universidade de São Paulo, a doutora Daisy Garrido. Daisy Garrido possui graduação em odontologia, mestrado e doutorado em ciências pela Universidade de São Paulo. É especialista em informática em saúde pela Universidade Federal de São Paulo, Unifesp. É diretora financeira da Associação Brasileira de Telemedicina e Telesaúde e membro do grupo de pesquisa Saúde, Inovação, Tecnologia e Educação, Grupo Site. Atualmente é pesquisadora colaboradora do Núcleo de Telesaúde, FOUSP Site, da Faculdade de Odontologia da Universidade de São Paulo. Entre suas áreas de pesquisa, suas áreas de pesquisas estão informática em saúde, saúde digital e educação à distância. Gostaríamos de informar que, durante a mesa redonda, receberemos perguntas dos ouvintes. Aos interessados, pedimos que solicitem um rascunho para a nossa equipe. Agora passamos a palavra para a doutora Deise Garrido. Bom dia a todos. Espero que todos tenham descansado um pouquinho da, de ontem, do dia de ontem, que foi bem intenso. E hoje nós vamos dar início ao, ao, ao segundo dia, que também vocês vão ver que vai ser bem intenso e muito rico. Uh, é com prazer que nós convidamos para compor, compor essa mesa o professor visitante do Instituto de Estudos Avançados da Universidade de São Paulo, o professor pós-doutor Donald Peterson. O professor Don Peterson é doutor em filosofia pela Universidade de College de London, mestre em fundamentos de tecnologia avançada de informação pelo Imperial College London e também é mestre em filosofia e psicologia pela Universidade de Edimburgo e atualmente ele desenvolve o projeto Vida na Era Cognitiva no Instituto, no, no Instituto de Estudos Avançados da Universidade de São Paulo. Bom dia, e muito obrigado por a convite de falar aqui hoje. Um, então, o mundo mudou, as máquinas mudarão, a vida mudou. Agora precisamos cyborgologia. E agora em inglês, como licença? Um, okay. uh, but you say if I speak too quickly, please. Um, I propose to use the word cyberology, defined as the study of the benefits, harms, nature, and steerage of digital technologies. And I emphasize the word steerage because I think that all technologies can cause benefit and can cause harm and can cause both. And it's up to us to steer them to a good result. So I call this ditropic, meaning that the benefit or the harm is not essential to the technology, but it is produced by the way we use them. So, <clears throat> for cyberology, I'll now show you a classificatory scheme, which I call cyber ontology, to give us a systematic approach to the conditions of the cognitive era. The, the cognitive era is the second digital era, Some call it the fourth industrial revolution. It has many names. But you see in the middle there, ARUC, A-R-U-C, meaning artificial intelligence, robotics, ubiquitous computing, and connectivity, fast connectivity. Uh, they're the main categories of technology which we have in the present era and which will have more and more influence on our lives. And one particular aspect of this influence I call MVIF, 
meaning that our data is massive, volatile, immediate, and fragmented. And this is a serious change to our lives, especially the volatility. Now, the main life areas I'm concerned with are health, education, work, and business. But if you multiply those three together, you get a grid of 64 cells, which obviously are soft cells. We, we don't need very exact tight boundaries between things, but I think we do essentially lack a vocabulary for describing the conditions of life in this new digital era. And I'll say more about that later, but um, basically technological reality has progressed so quickly that language has not kept up. And for this reason, I'll introduce some new words. <coughs> Now, some topics which I think will come up in um, the other talks in this session are cyborgia and change. Now, by cyborgia, I mean something pretty obvious, which is that we are increasingly in a synergistic relationship with machines. Yes, a, f a fancy AI system is not a hammer, it's not a screwdriver, uh, they are tools which we use, but our relationship with the AI system is of a different sort. Of course, the AI system is not a person, and of course, we never will be exactly the same. Now, the second major condition I want to emphasize is fast change. Now, this is due also to fast transport. Of course, airplanes make a difference to life. A very fast railways make a difference to life. But electronic communication is now almost immediate all around the planet. And this means that the world is no longer as stable and predictable as it used to be. And we need to adapt to unexpected situations, unexpected tasks. Now, in the business world, they're very explicit about this because, of course, the feedback loop for a business is that it goes bankrupt if it gets things wrong. And so they say that in conditions of volatility, agility is required of people, organizations, and even countries. And business people like to give the example of Nokia telephones because at one point they made photocopiers then they became very agile and they became a successful mobile phone company. And then they became non-agile and they failed to keep up with smartphones. So that's, that's a standard um, example given in, in business studies. Now we now come to operational transversality. The connection is that the conditions I've mentioned mean that tasks and situations arise which are both multifaceted and unexpected. Is my English okay? It's not too fast. Okay. All right. <laughs> so we live in an increasingly fluid and volatile world in which we need the transversal competence of combining and adjusting our existing knowledge and skills in response to tasks and situations of this sort as they arise. We need to put together a skill set for a new task which we were not expecting even yesterday. So human beings have no doubt done this forever in the past, but it's especially emphasized and prioritized now. Now, this can be an individual or it can be a team and it involves a pick and mix of tools and resources in response to particular challenges. Right? And this transversal skill prioritizes experience and practice and to some extent deprioritizes knowledge and information. And so 
an old educational model, certainly in my country, in Scotland, was that learning consisted in memorizing things that we could then repeat. And I think it's quite clear that that's not a transversal skill, and its importance has diminished. So there's a builder engaging in pick and mix, because I don't actually mean anything very abstract by this, although no doubt it has an abstract uh, side to it. But the builder has to build a house and puts together a team of people to build the house. And different houses, different garages, different huts uh, require different sets of people, experts, to help the builder. And this sort of thing is just normal in building. If, if the builder is given an order for another house tomorrow, he or she puts together a different team. Anyway, what I'm calling cyberology, the study of the benefits and harms, nature and steerage of digital technologies, is inherently transversal. Um, as we estimate these things, we estimate them on a case-to-case -case basis, and in fact, the available technologies are changing all the time. And multiple disciplines can be involved in this. For example, we might have a case where we need a lawyer and a robotics expert. We might have one where we need philosophy, computer science, and education, etc., etc. So this is not wanton interdisciplinarity, it's necessary interdisciplinarity. So there's going to be mention of the human brain in the third talk in this session. Um, I'll briefly mention executive function here. Uh, that is a functional diagram. The green part is the prefrontal cortex here. Um, it's uh, the, the main area associated with executive function, but in fact, several other areas are also involved. So this is a functional diagram. Anyway, the reason I introduce it is that it may serve as a useful analogy with transversal capability or with part of transversal capability. And looking at the bottom of the slide here, what is interesting is that executive function in our head is different from particular items of knowledge. It's not an item of knowledge in the sense that our schemas are, but it greatly influences the success of action based on that knowledge. So uh, contrary to uh, Plato in, the, uh, in his basic model of things, um, in Plato's model, um, Action is knowledge. I mean, the, 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 the action is produced by knowledge. And the more perfect the knowledge is, the better. And bad action is produced by ignorance. Now, this is uh, contradicted, in fact, by executive function theory, where it is asserted that successful action is more than the knowledge it employs. Uh, just to state the obvious, if you do something at the wrong time, maybe it won't work. If you do it two minutes later, maybe it will work. That's the sort of thing that executive function is supposed to control. And I take the liberty then of calling it a transversal function. So there's more pick and mix, to, just to remind us of the um, theme of this talk. This is a talk or into to action uh, rather than uh, to knowledge. So I'll now <coughs> suggest a pedagogical approach uh, in this spirit. So in the modern world, we know that employers have tasks which may require multiple skills. Yeah? And these can come at short notice. And that's one thing a manager 
uh, particularly appreciates in the business world, in, in many worlds, he or she appreciates employees who are able quickly to team together to get a job done. And you would certainly see the same on a building site. When a house is being built, um, the boss wants workers who can solve problems by forming teams, even for five minutes. So what we could do in this suggested strategy is to consult employers about the skill sets they need, the skill sets they find difficult to come across, and what they think will be in demand soon in the near future, and also what goes wrong with these combined skill sets. Uh, one that I'm well acquainted with is that uh, computer people uh, and managers often do not respect each other in my country. There's, there's uh, quite a lot of inefficiency produced by uh, the antagonism between these characters. Anyway, a pedagogical strategy, having uh, obtained this information from employers or managers, would be to set team projects or individual projects for students according to the skill sets that the employers have identified. Yeah. Now, the problems presented to these uh, teams of school children, for example, could be approached at increasing levels of complexity. For example, we could add stakeholders, we could add data sources, we could add company takeovers and expansions, we could extend the task. It, it would be inherently an extensible challenge, and it would be experienced, for example, for school children, in multidisciplinary co collaboration, which is not easy, but uh, it is more and more necessary. And one subject area for this could be cognitive computing, uh, as in IBM's Watson system. Uh, this is already applied in multiple industries. I, I would be going on and on all morning if I listed them all, but um, anyway, this is part of our lives already, even though mostly we don't know it. Um, and it, according to the industry it's applied in, uh, requires transversal treatment. So just uh, to finish this off, um, an analogy is that a carpenter, a woodworker, has a toolbox containing various tools. Now, these are used on demand for different tasks. Five, Five minutes. Yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah. Uh, now, skill and experience are needed to pick the relevant tools and to use them together. Everybody knows this with the carpenter's toolbox. So pick and mix is normal, but it is a skill. It's not completely easy. And, uh, well, when, when I first got my hands on a toolbox, I just did silly things with it. It, it took time to, to actually learn to use the tools together. For example, you use pliers to hold something and something else to, uh, to sharpen it. So I've tried to keep my examples concrete today. But there are paradigms involved. Um, I've emphasized action and tasks, as in projects, above knowledge as tested in exams. And I've emphasized tool use above perspective. Perspective is a metaphor. It does not literally mean what we use it to mean. It's a visual metaphor. And uh, I've preferred here to use a tool metaphor which does not mean that one is right and the other is wrong, but there is a balance between the two. <coughs> and I've emphasized employer consultation, which is empiricist, above preconceived curriculum, which is more rationalist. Right. All this in response to uh, the claim that modern life involves more than ever the need for transversal pick and mix treatment of what we know or utilization of what we know. So I'll yeah, nearly finish now. Um, this could be the subject of, of a long talk, but I'll just briefly introduce it. Um, if you look at the bottom there, 
uh, change has been so fast that both the dictionary and education are many years out of date. Uh, so we need new vocabulary. Now, uh, it's, this is not the fault of dictionary editors. In fact, it's part of their job to wait until words become standard usage and have been for several years. I don't think it's the fault of school teachers. I don't think anybody can just suddenly acquire new knowledge in the middle of their career unless we give them a year off or something like that. But nevertheless, I think it's a fact. And just as George Orwell said in his book 1984, uh, restricted vocabulary produces restricted understanding and that produces restricted action, which going back to the beginning of my talk, produces restricted steerage. So the very thing which we should be doing, we are inhibited from doing because we don't have the words. So I've made a list there, and the, the organizers will have the slides if you want to see them um, after the conference. That's great. Uh, but th that's just a quick look at a lot of cyber words. I, for example, identified cyber phronesis, Aristotle in the... Um, Nicomachean Ethics, Book 6, uh, identifies phronesis as practical wisdom. And uh, I think we need a lot more practical wisdom as we inhabit uh, cyberspace. But I think time is running out. So there's the word ditropic there. By meta-robotics, I mean human work which results from the need to build and design and repair and reprogram robots, etc. So this is the final slide. Um, the cognitive era creates a need for cyberology, and that's much more than computer science. It's everything to do with the utilization and steerage of new technologies. And my belief is that this could be taught in schools, universities, short courses, etc. The cognitive era also creates an increased need for transversal competence in addressing new and surprising tasks and situations in a fluid and fast-changing world. And that's why I've used the yin-yang symbol, because inherent to that uh, Chinese idea uh, is that um, if things get too extreme in one direction, uh, we're probably getting things wrong. So. I would suggest that perhaps the concept of the transversal has been ignored a bit too much in the past. And that's it. Muito obrigado.